Hello guys and welcome to this video which is made for MCDB 427 that is Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. I'm Camille Ayun and today I'm gonna talk about enhancers in general and experiments that highlight their identification and characteristics. So let's start with a brief description of enhancers. What are they and what do they particularly do? Enhancers are short stretches of DNA, about 50 to 1500 base pairs, that can be bound by proteins called activators to increase the likelihood that a transcription of a particular gene will occur. In this video, as previously said at the beginning, I will start with the discovery of the first enhancer, then I will talk about the fact that enhancers can be downstream of a promoter, and finally I will highlight some of the important features of enhancers, such as it can be moved and it can be flipped. The first enhancer was discovered in the 5' flanking region of evacuating virus 40 gene, SV40. This DNA region has been noticed because of its 72 base pair sequence called the 72 base pair repeat as you notice here in this figure. So in this figure, you see the structure of the SV40 vi virus, early control region as discovered, with starting site right here, with the Tata box, here is the starting site, data box, GC boxes, 6 GC boxes, and the 72 base pair repeats. This is just a general description of where the enhancer resided for this particular promoter. Enhancers are frequently found upstream of promoters they control. But this definitely not a strict rule. Tongawa and colleagues were studying a gene for a heavy chain of mouse antibody called gamma-2b antibody where the enhancer was speculated to lie within the gene. This figure is a map of the cloned gamma-2b gene where blue boxes are exons and lines between the blue boxes are entrons. X2 to X4 are cutting sites for a specific restriction enzyme. Here is the restriction enzyme. So they introduced this gene into mouse plasma cytoma cells that doesn't normally express this particular gene. The suspected enhancer lay in one of the gene's entrons as demonstrated by solid line, as mentioned previously, specifically between X2 and X3. The investigators began, began by deleting two regions of the DNA from this suspected enhancer region. The first deletion here is about 180 base pairs, we're gonna refer to this as Delta 1, and an overlapping deletion that is bigger than the first one, about 470 base pairs, we're gonna refer to it as Delta 2. Then, they assay the expression of the gamma-2b gene in cells transfected by these mutated DNAs. Keep in mind that they are making these deletions to test the hypothesis that the enhancer was in this region, and if true, then expression of the gamma-2b gene should be impaired. To detect the efficiency of expression of the transfected cells, they incorporated labeled methionine into newly made proteins. Then, immunoprecipitated the labeled gamma-2b protein with an antibody detected ag uh, directed against gamma-2b. Then, they electrophoresed the immunoprecipitated protein and detected them by autoradiography as you see here in this figure. For each construct, they are showing four independent immunoprecipitation. So, starting with lane 1, it is just a control from untransfected plasma cytoma cells. Since no bands immunoprecipitate from these cells, it, shown, uh, it shows that there is no non-specific binding of plasma cytoma proteins to the affinity column. Lanes 2 to 5 are cells transfected with wild-type gene as reference to compare with other constructs. Lanes 6 to 9, transfected gene has the delta 1 deletion. Lanes 10 to 13, transfected gene has the delta 2 deletion. So looking at this figure, there are bands that are related to the heavy chain gamma-2b that, that we are immunoprecipitating in addition to bands that are related to the light chain. Antibodies have a heavy and a light chain, so if you are immunoprecipitating the heavy chain as we are doing right here, you get the light chain too. So comparing the intensity of bands between the wild type genes and both the delta 1 uh, and the delta 2 deletion, you can notice that delta 1 deletion Gave a, uh, gave a slight reduction in expression of the gene, but delta-2 deletion gave a profound reduction, which implies that delta-1 deleted part of the enhancer, while delta-2 
deleted most, if not all, of the enhancer element. So the previous slide was an assay at the protein level. It showed the levels for both transcription and translation. But what if the decreased expression was due to other causes different from enhancers and gene expression? They wanted to measure transcription more directly. That's why the scientists here performed northern blots with RNA from cells transfected with normal and deleted gamma 2b genes. These blots are shown here in this, in this figure to the right. So lane 1 is a positive control, shows untransfected cells that express the gamma 2b gene. Lane 2 is a negative control with untransfected cells not expressing the gene. Lane 3 and 4, cells transfected with wild type gene. Lanes 5 and 6, genes having the delta 1 deletion. Lanes 7 and 8, cells transfected with gene having the delta 2 deletion. So as you see, the results came out to be consistent with that or the previous slide where the delta 1 deletion gave decreased transcription a little bit, decreased the transcription, while delta 2 deletion abolished transcription. So we can conclude here that the enhancer region of um, the enhancer lays in region of number 2 here, the delta 2, the, the, um, the delta 2 deletion. And delta 1 gave a decreased uh, expression suggesting that the enhancer extends at least partially into the overlapping region. So the enhancer region lay um, in, uh, definitely lay in uh, the region number 2 and may extend to this overlapping region with delta 1. The first set of experiments showed that there was a cis sequence required for transcription. The upcoming experiments and data will show that this sequence can be moved and flipped, which is a common feature of enhancers. So Tongawa's group removed the X2X3 region containing the gamma-2B gene and the enhancer, then they created four plasmids where they reinserted the X2X3 fragment in four different ways. Plasmids A and B, the fragment was inserted back into the intron when its usual location in the forward, that's plasmid A, or with the backward orientation, that is plasmid B. Plasmid C and D, the fragments was inserted into another cutting site, X1, cutting site X1, upstream of the core promoter in the forward, plasma C, or backward orientation, plasma D. On the right, you can see the quantification of immunoprecipitated protein expressed from these plasmids. Lane 1, right here, is untransfected cells lacking the gamma-2b gene. Lane 2 is the parent plasmid with no deletions. Lanes 3 and 4 is the fragment X2X3 deleted. Then lane 5 and 6 correspond to plasmid A. When I say correspond to plasmid A, I mean that they correspond to expression from plasmid A. Um, the, so, uh, 5 and 6 to the A, 7 and 8 for plasmid B, 9 and 10 for plasmid C, D, uh, 11 and 12 for plasmid D, and we have a lane M which contained protein size markers. We will only be focusing on the gamma 2B bands right here related to the heavy chain. The other bands are from co-immunoprecipitation of the light chain of the antibody, as I said earlier in the previous experiment. So what conclusions can be drawn here from this data? First, let's compare A and C. So, for plasmid A, the fragment was inserted within the gene in the forward, direc forward direction. Plasmid C, although it is in the forward direction, but it was inserted upstream of the core promoter. So, same orientation, different position, the expression came out to be the same. So we can conclude here that the position uh, is not important. Comparing plasmids A and B, same location within the gene, plasmid A in the forward direction, plasmid B in the backward direction, the expression was the same. So we can conclude here that the enhancer can be flipped. And finally, let's compare plasmids A and plasmid D. Plasmid A was reinserted within the gene, in the forward direction, plasmid D 
upstream of the core promoter in the opposite or in the backward direction. So they have different position and different orientation. Looking to the right here in this panel, we can actually see that the expression did not change. So the conclusion here is that the enhancer can be moved and flipped. So if you want to say, if you want to take away a, a, a big conclusion here, you say that the comparing degrees of expression from different plasmids, it is clear that the position and the orientation were not important for the expression. Just a couple takeaways before I wrap up this video again. Enhancers are short regions of DNA that increase transcription. It is different from a promoter and is orientation and position independent. Thank you so much guys for sticking around our, uh, the entire video and I hope I did a good job explaining some of the experiments that led to the identification of enhancer in the gamma 2b gene and explain its features. Again, thanks a lot and always go blue.